Hello everyone. Boy, what a month it's been. Work has been crazy. I've been sick for a couple weeks. Of course, we're getting ready for the holidays. I've got a couple of pies in the oven right now, and I'm going to be up at 4 o'clock tomorrow morning to start defrosting the turkey. Busy times. This project took quite a bit of time, and it's for a good friend of mine. His name is Martin. He's the guy who gave me all of this fantastic old horse equipment. Martin has a small Dixie mill that is missing a few parts, and I've been trying to help him out making parts for it here and there. And this particular project is a uh, work-holding clamp. I didn't have any drawings or even the original pieces in my possession to work from for this project, but I did have some photographs that were sent by a friend of Martin's showing what the factory pieces looked like, and with something in the photos to judge the sense of scale, I was pretty well able to reproduce it, at least as far as all of the important dimensions. What you've been watching so far is how I started the project, by making the little T-bolt with M6 threads. To cut the flats onto the end of the T-bolt, I used the fantastic milling attachment on one of the horth lathes. It really is a lot of fun to use, and the indexing mechanism makes it real convenient for things like this. I found an adapter in my pile of horth stuff that goes from the uh, horth taper, which I believe is a brown and sharp number 6, to a straight 5 8 inch shank. And that allows me to use the turret tooling in the tailstock of the lathe. So I made use of that for the cut knurling tool to make up a nice knurled nut for the T-bolt. I ordered some 1018 steel to use for the clamping finger, and it turned out to actually be something different. It work hardened when I was cutting it, and it ruined that cutting tool that I made in the previous video, Thin Blue Line. So the cut you see here came out a little bit ragged. Here you can see the side of the stock laid out with the geometry of the clamping finger. Nearly all of the cuts for milling the clamp finger geometry were laid out kind of by eye, using the top of the vise as kind of a guide, and a really thin piece of shim stock used on top of the vise just to give a little bit of clearance. It's pretty effective and for something like this where none of the angles really are critical, it works pretty well.
Before I recorded the footage you see here, I went back and cleaned up that radius that was cut into the top of the clamping finger. I used a miniature boring head that I made a while ago that works really well in the mini mill. Um, and that just kind of cleaned up some of the ragged edges that my chewed up shop made cutter left behind. For any of you who haven't come across Dale over at Metal Tips and Tricks yet, I really recommend that you check out his videos. I learned a pretty neat trick over there about milling a radius, and you can see I'm using that technique here with a pin put through the center hole and just making a series of repetitive cuts with the work rotated a little bit around that pin. Um, it's surprisingly effective. There's a link in the description to the video where Dale shows this technique. Go check it out. This clamp is designed with an eccentric lobe at the base of the lever that is what actually provides the clamping force. As you press down on the lever, the eccentric binds against the plate underneath it, between it and the milling table. That base of the lever is just going to start out as a small steel slug with a hole drilled slightly off-center, uh, about two and a half millimeters off-center actually and I needed to radius the edges of it a little bit and rather than use a file I decided to use another one of the tricks that Dale over at Metal Tips and Tricks has recently shown. I didn't get it on camera but the technique I used is one I've used many times before on the watchmaker's lathe uh, and that's turning by hand as they say using a handheld graver and a T-rest, you know, similar to how you would turn wood on a wood turning lathe. Um, and this gives you a, a tremendous amount of control. And with some practice, it's very easy to quickly turn some complicated shapes. The lever itself just threads into that eccentric lobe and you can see here I'm forming the shape of the handle using mostly um, some roughing cuts uh, followed by a file and some sandpaper. Next up is the pin that goes through the base of the lever.
the T-bolt, the lever, and the lever pin will all be heat treated. So that's what we're doing here. I'm starting with the T-bolt. Other than assembling and trying it out, the only thing left to do at this point was to make a base to go underneath the clamp. And this is to protect the table of the mill from getting scarred up by the eccentric lobe on the base of the lever. The original was clearly some kind of steel. I don't know if it was a hardened tool steel of some kind, but I decided to use brass for this partially because it's what I had on hand and was convenient, and partially because I felt like it would do a better job of kind of binding up against the eccentric lobe as it was clamped down. Um, and it will scuff and bruise up a little bit under use, but I think that's fine. The base plate was brought to final shape by draw filing up to the layout lines. There's a 6mm diameter pin that needs to go down through the bottom of the base plate to register in the T-slot of the mill table. This is just to keep it presumably from kicking off to the side and, and working its way out from under the eccentric lobe base of the lever. The lever pin is a loose fit inside the clamping finger holes and a press fit in the base of the lever, that eccentric lobe. Quick and dirty, I just used the small bench vise to press the pin into place. Since I don't have anything with a 6mm T-slot in it, I came up with this hodgepodge arrangement using an old Wade slide rest. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out and I hope Martin will be too. I know I left out some details on some of the pieces, for example you didn't see me make the little spring that goes underneath the clamping finger, you didn't see me make the screw that holds that spring in place, and you didn't see me make the little uh, half moon shaped piece that uh, goes into the top of the clamping finger um, the, underneath the, uh, the nut for the T-bolt. But thanks as always for watching and have a great Thanksgiving.